past 30 years, he's been showing up, whether it's Showtime at the Apollo, Family Feud, his radio show, his new ventures that are happening now, whether he was broke and homeless, quite literally, or he's become a millionaire several, several, several times over, as he seems to be now. He's showing up consistently. Steve Harvey, hilarious guy, kings of comedy. He's been in the comedy world for a very long time, most of my life, believe it or not. And he was telling the two guys over at uh, Earn Your Leisure about the day he became a millionaire. So it was some type of deal that he made, maybe it was a new show, maybe it was related to Family Feud, which he's known as a host of now. And he got the check and his partner, his friend, one of the people that he works with said, wow, you're a millionaire now. And he said, great, let's take everybody out to dinner. Took everybody out to dinner. I guess it was a big group or they drank a lot of champagne. And the check that they got was $3,000 for this receipt of the dinner. The check that he got that turned him into a millionaire was one million, two thousand and some odd change. So they finished the dinner, the bill came, it's three thousand dollars for the bill. He pays the bill, of course, because nobody else in his crew is millionaires. And then he leaves and his friend pats him on the back and says, Steve, I have some bad news. You're no longer a millionaire. <laughs> Cause this three thousand dollar dinner knocked him down to under a million dollars in his bank account. It's hilarious. He says it way better than I do. Of course, he's a comedian. <laughs> I'll throw a link up in the uh, in the show notes uh, that you can click on, watch the whole great interview. It's like two and a half hours long. It's definitely worth your time. But it reminds us that he was a millionaire at say noon that day. And then by 9, 10 p.m. that evening, as they were finishing dinner and he paid the check, he wasn't a millionaire anymore. Those things come and go. There's two really big lessons we can learn from this. The first lesson is that status roles such as being a millionaire or being a bestseller or being the number one person on the charts, those things come and go. Status roles come and go, but the key here is consistency, consistency. Again, he was a millionaire at say lunchtime and he wasn't a millionaire anymore by that evening. Does it make his worth less? Does it make his work less? Does that mean he shouldn't show up? Of course not. At the end of the day, literally, he had $999,000 and some odd cents. He might as well be a millionaire. We get into trouble when we actually take the status roles and assume they are permanent, as opposed to how we show up in the world. And that's something we can actually control. For instance, I've had three best-selling books. There was a day when I woke up in the morning and I was number one or number two or in the top five or 10 of the bestsellers list. And then I woke up the next morning, the next week, the next month, and I wasn't on the list anymore. Does that make that book less worth something? Does that make my work less worth something? Of course not. Now, number one, it's the idea of reaching that mountaintop. And once you're a best-selling author, <laughs> author, once you're a millionaire, you know, as, as Steve Harvey has proven, then that doesn't go away just because you happen to drop down that number. I've had years, I'm a freelance writer, so I do a lot of work. I've had years where I've hit new plateaus, all-time highs, as far as income that's come in, what I've gotten paid for a speaking engagement, what I get paid to be as a coach with my private coaching practice at DavidBrown.net. And then there are other years, other times when it's less. But if you're focused on the status role of it, then you always will be sad <laughs> when it goes away. Built from now, my last independently published book, which came out about a year ago, it was not a bestseller. It could be a bestseller in the future. I would love that and I would love to get into all y'all's hands. But it wasn't a bestseller. Does it mean that it's worth less? Does it mean more importantly that I'm worth less? It reminds me a lot of, um, of uh, Brene Brown, as far as their discussion, as far as failure and difference between I screwed up and I'm a screw up. Huge difference. <laughs> one is this didn't go that well, I own that. The other one is I am actually a screw up and that's, I'm branded with it. That's just how I am, I'm built like that. There's nothing I can do to change that. That's the difference between 
the activity and the labels that you have on the outside for this particular thing that you do <clears throat> and the difference between that and you actually saying, I'm a millionaire, I'm a best-selling author. What happens when that goes away? And it will. You will not always be a best-selling author. In some cases, if you end up investing in things like I do, or obviously like Steve Harvey does, or if you have certain bumps in your life or whatever, the amount of money that you have right now could go down because you invested in something, because you took a risk and it didn't pay off. Because there's life circumstances that are taking a lot of that stuff away from you. You need to go into that. Or maybe money's slow and work is slow. But you can't tie your worth to that. So number one, status roles. Um, and I love what Seth Godin talks about that over at the Kimbo workshop, akimbo.com. So this would be actually for the Kimbo podcast with Seth Godin. Worth listening to a podcast because he talks about status roles all the time. Those things come and go. Come and go. Come and go. Nice Freudian slip there. But just tie to your goals. Number two, status roles should not affect how you show up. So if I'm a best-selling author and I do a book signing and you paid good money, you know, $30 for a bill from now or, you know, $15, $17 for a career remix. And that week I happen to be knocked off the bestseller list because of some major, other major book. Does that mean that I don't give you as much of a keynote, <laughs> right? Does that mean I don't show up for you? Does that mean I'm crabby or less available for my coaching clients? Of course not. You want to connect the same way, whether you're up or you're down. Whether you have this major status or a proverbial low status. The key thing is to show up for people regularly. I found this where I've, again, had best-selling books. I've had books that have sold just above goose eggs, like single digits. Like it was me my dad and my mom and maybe my wife, they got a copy. And that's the only people that bought a copy of the book. But the main thing is showing up consistently. You're watching, I believe it's the 210th or so episode of the Bring Your Worst Show, which has happened over the past year, year and a half. Me showing up for you every week, several times a week. That's important to me. But you know whether Career Remix, the new book is a bestseller, or if the older books aren't bestsellers anymore and they stop selling, you know that I'm here. That's something that I love and respect about Steve Harvey's work is that over the past 30 years, he's been showing up, whether it's Showtime at the Apollo, Family Feud, his radio show, his new ventures that are happening now, whether he was broke and homeless, quite literally, or he's become a millionaire several, several, several times over, as he seems to be now. He's showing up consistently. If you're worried about the status roles, I have some really bad news for you. Those status roles are temporary. Even me being a dad and the so-called head of my household, there will be a period of time when my two sons will be taking care of me and I will not be the head of the household, neither will my wife. <laughs> because that's all part of time. It's everything is temporary. So if you realize and accept that everything is temporary, then you recognize what you can actually control. And what you can control is how consistently you show up and how you show up when you are consistent. It's as simple as that. If you want more insight, be sure to, to subscribe over at uh, youtube.com slash browndamon here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. Again, we got like 200 stuff an episode, so feel free to have fun, binge as many as you like, talking about passive income, talking about emotional intelligence. Again, shout out to Brene Brown, talking about how you can show up better in the world consistently. I know it's not always easy, but if you let go of the status roles, then focus more on the consistency than those beautiful status roles. As far as being a bestseller, as far as being the leader of uh, people that you serve, as far as being even a millionaire, billionaire, whatever your aspirations may be, they are a hell of a lot easier to achieve and a lot sweeter when you do. Until next time, remember you can bring your worth and you can always build from now. Take care.